Before disassembling, remove the batteries in game, plus put the power switch on the on position. This helps discharge the system if you recently used it. There's six tri-wing screws for you to remove. Four are on the outside, two are hidden under the battery compartment. After taking out all screws, the back of the Game Boy can be taken off. There's no wires that connect the battery compartment. Take out the power switch. Remember which direction it goes in so that it grabs the handle when you put it back. Now, the LCD ribbon needs to be disconnected from the motherboard before you can remove it. It's held in by two latches. Pull them up and use two screwdrivers to pull out the ribbon cable. Don't use too much force. If it feels stuck, make sure you open the latches all the way. The motherboard is held in by three regular Phillips screws. I had modified my Game Boy Color in the past, that's why you see tape holding the screen. Normally the screen is held on with a little adhesive. You don't really have to remove any of the buttons. Pull the original screen up to release the adhesive holding it. Don't pull it by the ribbon cable. The changes between the original McWill mod and the July 2019 update, it's just plug and play. It requires no soldering work, but you still need to cut out the left inner rib of the screen area. Test fit the screen inside so you can see where you have to cut out the plastic. I suggest you leave the protective screen cover on till you're ready to place the screen in. The screen isn't identical to the size of the original, so you see the edges of the screen from the outside. There's a couple of things you can do to fix this. Use a black marker to color in the silver border of the screen, use black electrical tape, or buy a replacement screen that is the size of the McWill screen. Take your time cutting out the inner rib. Make sure you don't damage where the power switch slots into. Once you get the screen in the position you want, you'll need to hold it in place. I used electrical tape so I could flip it around if I needed to clean the screen. You can also use double-sided tape to fill in the space. Before you close up, make sure the underside and the screen are clear of dust and fingerprints. Also, don't forget to pull off the protective cover over the McWill screen. Put back any buttons that might have fallen out and place the motherboard back into the case. You don't have to worry about putting something between the LCD and the motherboard. There's no traces or metal to cause a short circuit on the back. Reverse the process, putting back the Phillips screws. When putting screws back in, an easy trick is to go backwards till you hear a click. That means the screw is seated in the grooves it cut out of the plastic so you're not making new ones wearing out the hole. Feed the ribbon cable in, make sure it's pushed all the way inside, and lock the latches. Put the power switch back in, make sure it's grabbing the plastic lever. Place the back on and do a screen test to make sure it works and powers on. One thing I will warn you, the LCD screen takes two to three power ons and offs to start the Game Boy Color. This must be a technical requirement to avoid soldering wires. Like last time, put back all six tri-wing screws, including the two in the battery compartment. Store the old LCD away if you ever want to reverse the mod in the future. Put some batteries in and go check out your games. You now have a modern backlit screen while having the original form factor of the Game Boy. If you like my content, consider leaving a like and subscribing.